Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Is the Lord good today? Amen. Let's give him a good hand clap.
months, you heard them, you know about them. Remember our revival going on this month? <clears throat> Pastor and uh, Brother Wayne Wright will be back tonight. So they asked me to, to fill in this morning, and uh, we'll do the best that we do when you get 85 years old. Uh, you, uh, if you make a mistake, people will kind of look over it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, Listen, uh, we're going to do Listen. the best we can do this morning. Take your Bible and turn with me to John chapter 14. And we'll read one short verse of scripture. John chapter 14 and verse 15. It simply says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Here we go, to the Lord, in prayer. Dear God, in Jesus' name. In your mighty name, name Jesus, Lord, I bless you, God. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to help in some way, Lord, through this work, God. 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 Lord, we need all the help, God, that you can give us, Lord. God, we want to make heaven our home, Lord. God, we're living in trying times, God. But we have a wonderful Savior that cares for us. Lord, we love you today. We praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. And you may be seated. I'm going to talk to Ms. Lou Hall this morning about falling in love with God. Amen. Just simply falling in love with God. Yes. Amen. Love is a short word, four letters, but it is a powerful word. In fact, it may be the most powerful word in the English language. Amen, that's right. Amen. When Webster took up the pen to write the definition of love, no doubt when he laid the pen down, he felt like that he had failed. Love is something that's hard to explain. Amen. Amen. It is a big, powerful word. Amen. There was a rich man one time that had a fabulous art collection worth untold amount of monies. And he had a young son that he doted on. His life was wrapped up in this young man. And the young man met an untimely accident and, and lost his life in it. And so years later, the rich man on his deathbed made out his will. And in his will, he said that the hard work was to be all sold at an auction. And stipulation of the auction was that, that he had a portrait of that son that he loved so much that it would be auctioned off at the first part. It would be the first piece of artwork that would be put up to be auctioned off. And so the day came and the artwork was on display and, and the art collectors was there because some of this art was very, very rare and they could see the dollar signs and they came prepared to be at high on the artwork. So they began the auction and they put the son's picture up uh, for auction and the auctioneer tried every way he could to get somebody to bid, and, and nobody would bid. And finally, an old black servant that loved this young man also bid 75 cents on that portrait of the son. And immediately the auctioneer, ready to get on with the auction, sold the uh, portrait of the son to that a black servant that had served the family for years. And so they prepared to go on with the auction, but a lawyer stepped forth and he said, the auction is over. 
to be no more auction today for you see in his will he stipulated that whoever bought the picture of the son would get all the art work that belonged to them you see because somebody loved that son enough that they didn't have very much to give but 75 cents is all they had. They bought the portrait of the sun. And I wonder today how many times that, that people turn down the son of God. Come on. Amen. How many times they overlook whenever God says, if you'll accept the sonship, if you'll accept yes. and love the sonship, then I'll be all things to you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Love is a, a, a big word. It's a word that, that uh, it, it, if, if I were to try to explain to you this morning what love is, I would miserably fail also. But I remember in uh, 1956, sitting at uh, Joe Drive-In in Jacksonville, Texas, and uh, there's a car lot there now, it's on the left, it's right across from the uh, Tomato Bowl, it was a, a hangout for teenagers. And I remember sitting on that lot that night, and, and just a little field, uh, got out of a car across the lot and walked across the lot there. I turned to the boy that was sitting in the car with me. I said, you see that girl going there? And, and uh, of course, she's pretty nice looking. He had already seen her too. And, and uh, I said, you see that girl? He said, yeah, that's pretty nice. I said, yeah, I'm going to marry her. And it was love at first sight. Yeah. Now, I think it took her a little longer uh, <laughs> to, to, for me to sell her on my idea, but, but there was something inside me that I was serious when I said, I'm going to marry yeah. that girl, and I did, and just a few days, it would be 65 years, and, oh. and we'll be married, and, and that love is, and, and, and slacked off any. Right. In fact, it grows all over more day than I did the day that I married her, men. But, but love is, is a very, very powerful uh, uh, word. Uh, Jesus said, if you love me, Come on. keep my commandments. Come on. Yes. Love is so strong a word that wars have been fought because of love. Mm -hmm. Love is so strong a word that, that friendships have been destroyed because of love. Families have been divided because of love. Duels have been fought because of love. Murders have even been committed because of love. Love is a very, very powerful, powerful word. We read of love stories in the Bible of Rachel and Jacob, or Jacob and Rachel, how that Jacob said that the seven years that he served for Rachel seemed like just a few days. His love was so strong for her. Yeah. We read of the love story of Isaac and Rebecca, where the servant went over to get a, a bride for Isaac. And when it come time, Rebecca had never laid eyes on Isaac. She wouldn't have known him if he would have walked down the street. But the servant said, I believe you're the one for my master and I want to take you back to him for wife. And her mom and dad and brothers said we'll have to ask her and when she come in their presence they said will you go with this man she said I'll go we read the stories of all these love affairs Abraham and Sarah Boaz and Ruth and uh, Elphinai and Hannah 
been. But sandwiched in all between these pages of, of the Bible, one of the greatest love stories outside of God and His church is overlooked, and that's the love affair or the love of Adam for Eve. We don't think too much about it a lot of times, but if you read over in the New Testament, you'll get a glimpse of what I'm trying to say. In 1 Timothy 2, 14, it said, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. For you see, Adam loved her so much that he may not have understood what the circumstances or the consequences of her eating that fruit was, but somehow or another he knew that the tasting or eating of that fruit, ever what it was, apple, orange, banana, whatever it might have been, he understood there were consequences to be paid, and so he took and eat of that fruit because he loved her so much that whatever the consequences were, he was going to suffer them with her. Amen. He was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. Eve was deceived into partaking of the fruit. And so the love that Adam had for her was symbolic of the love that Jesus had for the church and the fact that he looked uh, at a simple dying world uh, and he took the stripes upon his back. Uh, he was nailed to a cross uh, for you and I. And the Bible says he took our transgressions. Uh, yeah. He took our sins. Uh, yeah. He took everything that would separate us from God. Uh, right. And he yeah. nailed them to his cross. Uh, oh, friend of mine, I want to tell you uh, this morning that the greatest love story that's ever yeah. been uh, is how God so loved the world. Uh, that he gave his only God's son. That he gave his only God's son. That he gave his only God's son. But however lasting life. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, we hear a lot about how that God loves us. And we sing a lot about how God loves us. And we talk a lot about how God loves us. And we think a lot about how God loves us. And we testify a lot about how God loves us. And that's great. For God is love. And God's love passes all understanding. Since Christ loved us while we we're yet sinners. Amen. 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 But in all that said, as much and, and as great as God's love is, what I come to talk to you about this morning is that we tell Him enough how much we love Him. Or is it just a one sided love affair most of the time? God, I thank you for the meals on my table and we should. God, I thank you I got a good car to drive you supplied me with, and we should do that. Amen. God, uh, I, I need you to fix this, and, and God, uh, you love me enough that you want to do this for me, but, but do we take time out uh, to really tell him how much uh, we love him? Amen. 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 The, in the scripture, we find that, that three times... Uh, Jesus asked Peter, said, Love us thou me. Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He asked him again, Peter, love us thou me. And Peter's trying to get a little like me. He said, Lord, you know I love you. And the third time he asked him, Peter, love us thou me. And, and, and Peter just got silent and said, Lord, you know, you, you know I love you. You see, what 
Jesus did was each time he asked him if he loved him, the first time he asked him, the word that was used meant, Peter, do you love me up here? Amen. Amen. The next time was a little deeper love. And finally, the last time had to do with the heart. Peter, do you love me enough that you'd do anything for me? Peter, do you love me enough uh, that, that you would go to all length for me? Peter, how much do you really, really love me? Man, God this morning is interested in being our, our Savior. He's interested in loving us. Amen. Uh, but also he created us uh, because he was lonesome uh, for somebody that would love him uh, just because uh, of who he is. Uh, somebody that wasn't forced to love him. Uh, somebody that wasn't dictated to to love him. Uh, but somebody that would back up and say, God, uh, I love you more than anything else. Uh, I love you more than God. Uh, I'll do anything for you. Uh, God, I'll go all the way with you. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Right. Yeah. And we love him. We won't have any trouble with believing the gospel. Right. If we love him, we won't have any trouble believing in the death, burial, and the resurrection right, right, yeah. or repentance, baptism yeah, in yeah. Jesus' name yeah. and the infill of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. If you love him this morning, uh, you'll go all the way with him. Uh, yeah. Amen. If you love him this morning, uh, you'll invite him into your heart uh, yeah. and you won't be dead or blind when you speak in other tongues uh, with the Spirit of God in your mother. Uh, you won't be satisfied uh, until you're baptized. Uh, in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. We won't have any trouble living holy because uh, we tell God, God, uh, yeah. whatever it takes, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to spend uh, eternity with you, God. Uh, I'm falling uh, in love with you. We sing that song, uh, falling in love with Jesus uh, yeah. is the best thing yeah. I've yeah. ever done. Uh, I remember in 1962, uh, that an old fashioned altar, I met the love of my life. Hallelujah. I met the one that gave all for me, and now I want to give all for him. Hallelujah. I want to love him with all of my heart. You see, God this morning is not interested in our ability, but he is interested in our availability. He is interested. We'll be there for him. We love him no matter what. Amen. It's easy to love God on the mountaintop, but what about the valley? How do you feel? You still love him. Amen. When the sun shines, but when the storm clouds come, yeah. do you still love him? Oh, Amen. Yeah. Have you fell in love yeah. with Jesus? Or is it just in your head? Yeah. Amen. If it's just in your head, you'll fail. If it's the second degree of love, you'll fail. But if you get it in your heart, yeah. God, I've got it in your heart. Yeah. I'm in love with you. I'm We won't have any trouble being faithful if we fall in love with God. We won't have any trouble loving our brothers and sisters if we fall in love with God. We won't have any trouble loving pastor and family if we fall in love with God. We won't have any trouble paying tithes and offering if we fall in love with God. Amen. We won't have any trouble dressing right if we fall in love with God. Amen. We won't have any trouble talking right if we fall in love with God. We won't have any trouble with being dissatisfied if we fall in love with God. And we'll have no trouble with holiness if we fall in love with God. Hallelujah. And I'm almost through. Amen. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Clark Nightingale was asked at the end of her illustrious and historic or heroic life what her life secret was. She answered, well, I can only give one explanation, and that is that I never kept anything back from God. Amen. Amen. I never reserved anything away from God. I was willing to give God everything. Yes. Amen. Jenny Lynn, at the height of her <coughs> uh, career, stage appearances in Europe and America more than she could handle. At the height of her career, when she was most popular, she stepped off of the entertainment stage and disappeared. She was found at a seaside cottage, sitting out on the uh, shore there on the beach in a chair with the sun going down. And the person that tracked her down and found her said, Jenny Lynn, why are you out here whenever the stage is all the world is crying for you? She said, whenever fame and fortune, when adoration from the public, and my voice began to mean more to me than this. She had her Bible in her hand. She said, I felt like it was time to leave it all Amen. and go back to this. Yeah. She said, you see that sunset? Yeah. You see that ocean that you made? See, the Word of God means more to me than all my career could ever mean to me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In closing today, a Swiss holy hermit named Nicholas of Blue, he pleaded this prayer with God. He said, Oh God, take from me what keep me from thee and give me what brings me to thee and take myself and give me thyself. Church, I think it's time this morning that we fall in love with him. He paid so much. Oh, it was dead I could never repay. And all he says, if you love me, just keep my commandments. Can we stand this morning? Let's raise your hands and love him this morning. God, we love you. Praise you and adore you. God, you mean everything to us this morning. Jesus, help us, God, to be faithful and true to you. Lord, we'll always love you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Lord bless you.